an artist to producers, hustlers and in between. Taking a moment to bring exposure to the everyday people and topics we all take for granted. This is the Sit Down. Christian Adam G. You probably heard that name before on YouTube, known for his prank and entertainment videos. In the Bahamas, he's one of the top YouTubers around. But it's no America. Becoming a full-time YouTuber in the Bahamas is a huge accomplishment. I don't think the country itself is even aware of. This sit down is going to be really special as you get a full rundown of what it takes to accomplish the level of success he has. Christian Adam G, that's what they call me. I got my name mainly from first name Christian, middle Adam. My last name is Gilbert, actually. Yeah, that's my name, so. Yeah, people ask me, you know, people ask me all the time, where you get this Christian Adam G thing from, bro? So yeah, it's just my name without the last name fully extended up, basically. When I first started my YouTube channel, I was I was, I was Christian Adam, and then I just added the G eventually, sometime. I think it started off, I was in Georgia with my old man, right? He lived down there. He moved when I was in the eighth grade or so. He went there, he was living illegally at first, and then eventually, you know, he ended up getting straight or whatever. But at the time, when I was there, he was he was living there illegally, you know? So we was living hotel to hotel, you know? Because being an immigrant in America ain't that easy, bro. You can't open up you no know, apartment in your name. You gotta do everything, you know what I mean? You can't get no car, all that stuff you just can't do when you're uh, when you're an immigrant, so we used to live in hotel to hotel, basically. And we used to in some rundown hotels, bro. Prostitutes everywhere. They ask me every day. Niggas asking me for something to smoke every day, bro. That's that's an everyday thing. Niggas asking people knocking on your door, asking for condoms. It's in a bad spot. It was in bad, you know, murder wise. You just you around a bunch of people, you'd be like, nigga, why here? Type vibe. And I remember we was moving hotel to hotel, and one day he's like, man, you know, he told me he's like, man, you should, you know, start making videos or whatever, because you know I'd watch a lot of YouTube. And before he even told me, I remember like years before that, I was like, man, I wanted to do my own YouTube channel. I always watch people do prank videos or whatever, and that's how I wanted. I was like, man, I want to do something like that. That look fun, you know? And so when I was living in a hotel with my dad, I think this is like maybe our third or fourth hotel. Because, you know, like I said, we were skipping from hotel to hotel. Yeah, I mean, because we couldn't even afford that really. Oh, he couldn't afford it. I was working with him, you know? Yeah, so like he told me, I was living in a hotel at the time in Atlanta. We opened up my bank account. And so I started from there. And it's been, this is in 2016, I believe. Yeah, I think it's 2016, so yeah. I don't like to, you know, kind of put myself in a box. I kind of like to do everything. But like these days, I like to kind of keep it original, you know? I like to do stuff only only me doing. How I would describe my videos, though, I, I describe it more like a journey, or most of my stuff, you know? You know Destination A, I'm starting there, and I'm getting to... And so that's why I, that's how I like to do my stuff. Although, you know, those videos may take longer to do, you know, I wouldn't call it comedy. I wouldn't call it, you know, just regular entertainment. I would say it's like entertainment with a purpose, I guess. It's always some kind of end goal for me when, uh, when it comes to the stuff I do. And I would give anybody the advice, you know, when you're doing YouTube, I would much prefer you to like, to try do like original stuff, bro, because, man, going on YouTube, you can find everybody doing smash your past videos or um, what kind of videos they be doing nowadays. Uh, uh, shoot, I don't even watch YouTube. I don't watch, I don't know, I tell a lot of people that. I don't watch YouTubers, you know, at all. But they be doing smash the past videos, um, public interview videos, stuff like that. And I just, I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? I want to do stuff to where, you know, if someone was to copy me, they'd be like, yeah, that's Christian stuff. I know you get that from. So it's always good to be original, bro. Cause just YouTube is already saturated with a bunch of stuff. But it's like being a Bahamas YouTuber. I was like, bro, how the hell you be doing? How you how you do it and how you do it for so how you been doing it for so long now? Cause like you've been doing that what 2016 is 2021 now. And so how the hell you find ideas every year in Nassau? I say, bro, you know how I see it, bro. I don't even look at it as a disadvantage, you know. Even though it kind of is when I, you know, it, it, to be honest, you know, it's a lot of stuff that I can't do. It's a lot of stuff I have to do extra for. You know, I tell a lot of people starting YouTube, you know, being from the Caribbean. Not even just YouTube. Being from, you could be doing, you could be a rapper, you could be an actor, whatever. Being from the Caribbean, it's like you have to work twice as hard just to get in the same spot as a, let's say, an American would do. Cause he already halfway there. He got citizenship. He could be able to go and get himself, you know, opportunities. Well, so we got a whole, all kind of stuff we got to do. We got to go travel, try get straight, and then this and that and this, and then some people got to result in getting married to get citizenship. All kind of stuff they have to do. So being from the Caribbean, bro, you got to work twice as hard to get. I try not to look at it like that. I try to say, okay, you know, what. Could I do with the current situation that I have now, you know? 
I don't really, I don't really like YouTube, you know. I tell people all the time, I, I really, I don't, I don't really, I don't see myself as, as someone that make YouTube videos. I kind of make stuff to where as my purpose and when I come up with stuff, it's like, bro, I want someone to see this one day. Someone to see it and be like, yeah, yeah, let's see if we can put them in something. Because YouTube is my end goal. If I was in a position where I'd want to be, and that is to be in movies, kind of like the dream as, as you kind of have, I have everything put together. I want to, I want to edit, I want to be in movies, you know, in front of the camera, I want to direct, I want to do everything. When I get to the spot where I want to be, YouTube is finished for me. You know, I'll kind of do it like how Will Smith doing it, where he's already successful actor and he doing him stuff, but on the side, he do make, he do YouTube videos. So that's what I want to do. So, like I said, I started YouTube in Atlanta. Came home, I think like a year later, a few months, close to a year later, I came back home, 2017. I ain't been to stateside since, but, and so I was like, man, hey, YouTube wasn't working out all the way. Like I was making videos, but I wasn't making money, money. I don't think I made money, money in, until like 20, 2019. 2020, that's when I think I started making money, money. But come home and I was packing bag for a while actually. So I was packing bag and I remember I came in to the store. I remember this, um, the manager, he's like, man, it's the, that one big, tall, damn trolley, but he's like, bro, put all of us up and then you can start working. And I just turned around, pick up my bag and left. I never worked for someone ever again. From there, I was like, you know what? I gotta put my all into this YouTube. I ain't got no choice no more. Ain't no plan B, no plan C for me. I gotta make this work. And so, quit everything I had going on. I was like, you know, I'ma do this YouTube thing. And I ain't turned back since. In my mind, it's like, man, I know I'ma get to where I wanna be. You know, cause I feel like, I don't know, I just make, I could make different stuff from what people doing now, you know what I mean? Even if the YouTube thing wasn't a thing, nah, it ain't, that ain't that ain't built in me. I can't, you know, I used to type a nigga like, even though it was stupid, I used to type a nigga like, I don't want nobody telling me what to do. I think the only time I'll ever, you'll ever see me work for someone is if I'm an actor working for the director on the job, you know? Even that, I still would call that freelance cause you still built in, building your own name. I can't now work for somebody, bro. I, nah, that ain't me at all. Yeah, that remind me though, that remind me when COVID first happened, like I remember everybody was starting their own business at that time. That was dope, that was dope to see, you know. You remind me of that, I forget about that. Yeah, right, everybody was starting, all the girls and niggas, everybody starting their wives saying, you know, he's starting his own business to make money. That was dope to me, bro. Yeah, bro, I like that people were starting. I mean, I see, you know, a lot of things opening back. I feel like people getting back to their old jobs again, but yeah, but that was dope though. Besides people dying, it was a good thing to make people do different things. Bad things about YouTube, I would say. I guess the, uh, the you know, how it, uh, how it unstable. Cause YouTube ain't like a regular job, you know? That's assuming you don't get catch. Whether you work and don't do nothing at the job, you still can get paid. But with YouTube, if you ain't doing nothing, you ain't getting paid. Or, well, you know, you still make money off your videos that you have now. But if it ain't doing good, you ain't getting, you know? So I think that's the worst part I would say about YouTube, you know, it ain't stable. That's kind of another reason why I'm not a, a big fan of YouTube. Like I, I love YouTube for where it got me, but like, this ain't my end goal, I tell a lot of people. Eventually, I wanna quit this. You know, this ain't no stable thing. I wanna be in something that's stable. Acting ain't really that stable either, cause you know, you gotta find jobs. But I feel like with that, you can know, you always can do commercials and you know, when you build your name, you can do so much different things. I think that's the, I would say that's the worst part of YouTube. You know, I would tell a lot of people these days, although I did it differently, my advice I would give people is not even to do the same thing I did. Cause YouTube is so unstable, bro. I would say, um, I don't I'm making good money, but I don't wanna base it off of me. You know, if YouTube was easy, everyone would be doing it. Everyone would be making, you know, five, digits a month or whatever. So I wouldn't say it easy, you know? I would tell everybody, bro, go to try to go to school. If, if you care about YouTube that much, go to school, try to get like a film, something, something in film. Networking is the best thing. You meet somebody who could put you in a position to where you really want to, because YouTube, I don't feel like that should be anybody end goal. It's just something, I see it as a passionate way to get to where you want to be. That's the worst part of YouTube. The good part I would say is like, the good part, I guess, meeting people, I guess. Getting to put out stuff that probably my kids can see one day. Even if the person was to tell me like, yeah, bro, you, I want to do this for the rest of my life, YouTube, I'd be like, why? I don't get, me personally, I don't get the logic on that, bro. I just see YouTube as a passionate way. Like a lot of folks do YouTube, you know, and that's what they do. Now, I got so much grander goals in life, bro. Anybody who's trying to be like me, I tell them, <laughs> don't even try to be like me, bro. Cause what you think I is, dying with it, what I is, dying where I trying to go. You living here, like I say, just so much things you got to do. And then even to get paid, you got to have an American bank account. And I got one, you know, but kind of think of myself as a exception of the rule that I had to do a lot of stuff and so you need someone to get American bank account. You need someone that living in America and then you gotta go there and do this and do that. You need tax ID number and all kind of stuff we don't. They don't provide people in the Bahamas so it's like, nah bro. YouTube cool or whatever but end goal wise, no. Some people would say, you know, it's the fame and money but you know, you gotta work for that too. I know, I, it's kind of hard for me to think of that as, as the bright side because you know, you gotta work hard for it. It ain't, that ain't something that come easy. Thinking only positive wise, like yeah, the, the fame and money is like a good, I think that's that's a good addition to it. You know, when I, I when I say fame, I meant, 
you know, just fame, you know, who cares for that really? At least after a while, you don't care at least. At first, you know, when I did my, when I was doing YouTube, it's like, yeah, bro, this is the dream job, you know, cause like I get money and I get the fame, like, bro, what else could I ask for? That's what I was telling myself. You can't ask for nothing better than that. So it's like, nah, it's like, bro, after you get it so long, even myself, I don't even see myself as someone famous, but at least for Nassau, like after a while, bro, you know, it's be certain times, like for example, when I go to the mall or whatever, cause I have to go to pay bills or whatever. People coming up to me, you know, asking for pictures. You know, at first it was cool, like, yeah, bro, let's do it. But now it's like, nah, I ain't even trying to, you know, cause sometimes you just want to be in and out. You don't want to talk to nobody. So, you know, you want to dress regular. You can't dress regular no more cause everybody asking you for pictures. So unless you want to look beat up on the camera, so it's like, you got to make sure I think of what you put on before you wear it and all kind of, I don't be into all that. So these days when I walk into the mall or going anywhere public, when I know there's going to be someone that's probably going to ask me for a picture and I pull out my phone or whatever, you know, and I just walk like this. And most likely people ain't gonna bother me. They just say, hey, Christian Amji. And I just like, yeah. And then I, you know, I walk. But that's how I do it, bro. You know, I tell people that story like, bro, at first it was, the theme was cool, but nah, nah, yeah, the little noise. Yeah, bro, I just be trying to get it, get in, get out, you know? Sometimes, you know, sometimes I be, yeah, let's, you know. But I had all the people coming on to be strong, like strong, strong, and just, I want a picture. Like, you know, like, take care of my child, help me take care of my child. I had everything, but bro, it's weird, bro. I mean, but I, I agree with you, stateside, they wilder down there. You know, I never, but me personally, I never, I never got to experience all the fruits of my liver, America wide. Cause I didn't blow up until I got back home. You know, the Travis Scott video, that was home. The one cent, 50 cent, that was home. Everything I did that was grind was home. So I never got to see the wild, wild side of it yet. You know, cause like I said, I have been to America since 2017. Seeing that I don't, I'm not even like a big, big fan of it now. I know it's probably gonna be worse when I eventually move, you know? But hey, you know, I, that's what comes with it. I can't complain really. And you know, it ain't necessarily a bad thing, I would say, that people want a picture with you. Just be those days where it's like, you know, not today. I even talked to YouTube personally. I never got a, a good reply back from them. I was like, man, y'all gotta open it up for people in the Bahamas so we don't have to get an American bank account because that even ain't really possible that much to do. Like it's possible because I have one, but like not anybody from the Caribbean could go to America and say, let me open up a bank account because it's just so much stuff you need. And so what my dad did for me, he put me on one of his um, utility bills, put my name on it. And so we went back with the bill saying, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm on the, you know, you see Christian Adam Gilbert on it. I had to show that and then I had to show a tax ID number. You know, I don't feel like I'm gonna be satisfied with myself or ready to die basically unless I get to where I want to be with this movie thing. I got all, all kind of goals I want to do and all those stuff revolves around first of all moving and then being in the movies, commercial. I want to do everything bro. That's what I want to do and so like my advice to everybody bro don't make this your end goal bro. YouTube for the, for the good part is dope because like I say there's no place other no there's no other place in the world where you could actually find passionate ways to where you want to be in this film world and YouTube um, supplies just that you know so I love YouTube for that. I never, you know, slander, you know, the, the platform that brought me up, basically. I mean, they never did that for me personally. Yeah, I never slander them, so no, because like I say, it's a good passage way to where I want to be, and so. My advice to everybody, like I say, make sure you have some end goals. Don't make YouTube your end goal, end goal. Although it's a bunch of people doing it, and they go on Lamborghinis, they got houses and all that. A lot of people, when they like, you know, no, I want to do this YouTube thing. I say, okay, so, you know, what's, what's stopping you? Like, you know, you trying to get this camera? Nah, bro, for me? Oh, this is the same phone I had, actually. It's an iPhone 6S Plus. It's the same exact phone I had when I first started YouTube. I just got my phone stolen, so I had to go back to this. I had the same phone, I'd turn it sideways, set it up, you know. Yo, what's up, Krishna Anji? That's how I did my stuff. You know, I had no light. I had to go in my, my um, he's in the hotel at the time, like I say. I went inside the bathroom, set up. I put one of my bed sheets over the curtain and I used that as a white backdrop. I used, you know, cause you know, the bathroom light used to be good too, so. Bro, you know, you don't need nothing. That's how I started. I didn't know how to edit. So if you watch my videos now, all that just learned myself. I never, you know, had no classes. It was just go on YouTube, try to learn a little one, you know. If you have a real passion for it, you could really want to do it. Starting from this phone and, you know, upgrading to $800 camera and to $5,000 camera. And so you could get there if you want to get there, bro. It just depends on how much you care. Even if it ain't YouTube, bro, you doing music, you rapping. You could, you could start, you ain't got nothing you could start with. Uh, headphones and then eventually you know you make money you start you buy a mic buy and learn how to anything bro you know if you care for it enough you're gonna find ways to make money to get your equipment but start somewhere don't just say i'm gonna wait amazon itself they start in the basement everybody gotta start somewhere bro you gotta expect to have the top because you're trying to get on somebody else level who've been doing it for years my first check though youtube has this option where you can be able to not get because youtube pay monthly youtube has this option where you'd be able to not get paid and save it for months and so when i first started youtube i saved my money for months i think it was like six months i saved my my money for and so my first purchase i i bought with my youtube money was the camera so i spent a, i spent a smart i would say and so i got a, my camera it was 800 dollars camera it came with a mic and so that's how i made my first purchase when i started making money money when i started my, my first time making five digits a month bro 
but I was spending money stupidly. I was going in the mall, buying like eight shoes, nine shoes at a time, walking up with all kinds of sparkling when plastic bags still was a thing. So niggas used to walk, watch me walk out the, the mall by myself. Eight bags, nine bags in my hand. I was buying like eight, nine. I got so much shoes at this point now, boy. I just, I was spending money stupidly, bro. My, I wouldn't even get nobody advice because people got to go through it themselves, I would say. When they start making some money, money, you gonna have some times where you spend that stupidly and you look back at it. One of those months where you don't make that no money. It can be them time when you down bad and you ain't got no gas in, whatever. It could be that time you look like, dad, I need all them damn shoes, bro. <laughs> You're like, I even need all them shoes, bro. I ain't even need it. You can look at that like that. I, and I, I definitely felt it sometimes. I mean, I still make money, so I, I cool. But it definitely been some times where I didn't make and I look back like, damn. I spent a lot of, you know, spending, going on um, $20,000 trips and, you know, you be spending money stupidly. Like, I can't tell you the last time, bro. And I've been trying to stop myself from doing that. I can't tell you the last time I look at a price, bro, for nothing. If I like it, I just, okay, yeah, give me that. I stopped looking at prices. I've been trying to stop myself from doing that. For example, I would go travel somewhere. Hey, I want the best hotel. I, I ain't looking at the price. Give me that. That's what I want. That's how I be, bro. You be spending money stupid when you start making money. If you could listen to me, I doubt people will because when they get that money in their hand, they turn different. But if you could listen to me, try save a little something because, bro, going through it, you can be like, yeah, bro, I should have saved that dog. It will become a day yeah. and you're like, yeah, dog, you ain't got it. Yeah, yeah, so what to do? Try to have different avenues of money. So I don't mind people when they want to do YouTube and have a job or if they, oh, you sell merch or you make music. That's kind of what I do. I have like, I'd say like four, I do music and my music trash, but I make a lot of money on my music. I don't know, hey, I don't know if that's true, but technically, I think I'm the biggest rapper in Nassau. Technically, <laughs> I think so. Numbers wise, yeah, because I don't think I can name someone that had a million in streams and I, I have two million in streams from one song. I think numbers wise, in the, like I say, my music suck. I know it suck. And so someone making all kind of money on music that they don't care about. And then there's people that do care about the stuff, putting in time, spending money on music video. I do all that garbage myself. I don't even care for it. I, you know, put a, put a song together in two minutes and I make with 10 digits off the song. Yeah. Done 10 digits, my bad. Five digits off the song. Yeah. And so, and so yeah, I do music. That's avenue for me. I have merch, that's avenue, YouTube. And like, I make money in my videos. For example, the last video, where I one cent to 50,000. So I make money from posting the video, basically from the views. And I make money in the video from making the video. So that's a different avenue, sponsorships. So that's like five different avenues. In a weird way, it helps you save money. The more money I make, the more I save for some reason. I don't know why, the more money I make, the more I save. <laughs> It's like when I had different money coming from different places, like, okay, you know, yeah. I don't know. That's probably backwards, but for me, I don't know. Everything expensive here, bro, everything. I don't think nothing over here I would say, yeah, we got it better. Everything is almost double over here. Retail for shoes going for 180. That's retail stateside. Over here, retail shoes, 280. It, like everything is just double. This, if you come to Nassau, just know whatever you pay in America, you pay in double here. Probably with a little more extra too. I don't think nothing over here I would say, yeah, we got it better. Probably haircuts, price-wise at least. They probably got more talent down there, but price-wise, we spending about $5, $10 haircut. Stateside, when I was living down there in Atlanta, I was spending 18 a cut. That's way different from Nassau niggas go to Stateside and niggas tell them, bro, $20 for a nigga. Be like, oh, hell no. Because we so used to $5, $3 shape up, but that's the only thing I, we probably got bit, got it better, price-wise. Other than that, everything is more expensive over here, bro. I tell you, bro, ain't nothing easy on this world. I wouldn't look at what you do and say it easy. Even though, you know, I, I, I do stuff with the camera. I wouldn't look at nobody job and say it. Even if they park and buy it, whatever. I ain't look at nobody job and say it easy, bro. Because when you actually do it, like for example, when I doing that Burger King wide, man, I say, bro, it's hotter than my damn job. <laughs> it's that Burger I say, bro, I don't know who the hell is. Y'all Burger King people, y'all different. That hot. So, bro, everything hot, bro. So, yeah, dog. Oh, shoot. So, what do you guys think? Are you currently becoming a YouTuber in the Bahamas? Were you able to use his experience to help guide you in the right direction? Let me know down below. Be sure to like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more.